Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today is a very exciting day because you see the brick wall behind me. It's getting distressed. So these are brick panels from Home Depot. They were like 40 bucks each and they're faux brick. So they're really thin and they're just like nailed up to the wall. And the goal is to have it look like a New York loft apartment or something. So we need to distress these walls because they just look too brand new for what I'm going for. So if you did not know, this is gonna be my home gym area. This wall is still in progress right here. And over on this wall, I'm probably gonna have like a pegboard situation for gym equipment. But on this back wall right here, it's gonna be just really aesthetic and cute. And there's gonna be two cute lights up there, hopefully. So I just want this wall to look really cool and modern. So the plan is to distress it. I'm gonna take some wood putty. It's like that you would fill in holes on the wall with basically. And that's what I'm gonna use to try and distress it and make it just look like plaster up on the wall kind of. And then I'm gonna whitewash the whole wall. So hopefully today I can get all of the wood putty up and then I need to get a couple of white paint samples to just figure out what kind of white paint I want to whitewash over everything with. So I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna show you the materials that I have. And then we're gonna get started distressing this so that it can be a really cool modern home gym area when we're done. All right, so I've just got a couple of putty knives right here. And then this is the, putty. as you can see, it's just kind of wet and it looks like plaster. So I'm gonna be putting it up on this brick and I'm gonna try and fill in some of these cracks too between the panels, but I'm just gonna put it up kind of in a random pattern um, so that it looks really distressed and just looks really cool. And like, this is an old wall. Okay, so I've got you guys all set up to get a little bit of footage of me doing this, but I just wanted to insert a quick picture of what I'm going for. So this is a picture I think I've shown on here before, but it's just kind of what I want this to look like when it's all done. So it's going to be quite the transformation, but this is what we're going for. Okay guys, when I tell you it was so much fun putting this putty on the wall, you have no idea how much fun it was. So something that I really wanted to do was kind of start in the corner because that really covers up the seam between this wall and the wall to the left of it. So I really wanted to get a good amount in the corner and as you can see, I'm applying it pretty thick and then I wanted those lines to go through it where the knife was so that it looked natural and it looked like this was really part of a loft or some construction zone where there's just putty up on the wall. And even though it hurt my OCD heart a little bit, I knew that the pattern needed to be extremely random and just look like it was thrown up on the wall kind of. And so I really went abstract with it. I didn't do any straight lines or anything like that. I tried to make it look as natural as possible. So these sheets of faux brick are about four feet wide each. And so something that I really wanted to make a priority was covering up the seams between them. So I tried to make that look as natural as possible. And I even wanted it to kind of look like there was a crack in between each of the seams. And so I put a lot of putty in those seams to make sure that it was looking natural and that you couldn't tell there were strips of faux brick up on the wall. The one piece of advice that I would probably have if you were trying to recreate this is that I wouldn't be afraid to put a ton of putty on there because since I did paint this wall second, which you'll see in just a few minutes, I really couldn't see a ton of the putty come through the paint. So I would not be afraid to put a lot of putty if you do want to be able to see that um, because it won't hurt the wall or anything like that. Um, just throw as much of it as possible on the wall because it really does add a lot of cool texture and you want that to show through your paint.
So I started out with the really big spots of putty and then what I ended up doing was taking putty kind of on a more light hand and going all over the wall so that there really are no spots of brick that you don't see some putty on it. Even if that just meant that I was scraping the excess off of my knife, I just went in random patterns all over the wall so you can see here that the wall is pretty much completely covered. Okay, as you can see, I've finished most of the plaster. I still have a couple of touch-ups to do, but it's looking really, really cool. I think it already looks so distressed and cool. So now what I have to do is go pick out some white paint samples to figure out what type of white I wanna whitewash over it. So I'm thinking just a regular like ultra white type, um, but you never know. I might wanna make it a more warm white or more cool white, I'm not really sure. So I need to go pick out a couple of samples not too many, I'm not gonna go crazy. <laughs> and I'm just gonna test them out on the wall if I can and figure out how I wanna whitewash it. I'm either gonna do that today or tomorrow, but hopefully by tomorrow I'm whitewashing the wall. And next it was time to tape up, plastic, and prep for painting. What's up guys, it is the next day. So I told you I was gonna go get some paint samples and the more I thought about it, I actually just wanted to do ultra, ultra white, which is the same thing we did on the ceiling in my she shed. So if you haven't seen any of the she shed videos, I will link those right here. And we just did ultra white on the shiplap ceiling in there and it turned out really great. It's just a perfect plain white. And that's really what I want on this wall. I definitely don't want it looking too warm or anything like that. So I thought just sticking with ultra white was probably the best way we could go. And so I'm about to try and mix my paint. So this can is Valspar Ultra White Flat Interior. This is my little paint spray thing. This is the gun that it goes on. It's super messy. And so it goes on like this and then you spray it. So what I'm gonna try to do is start out with about one part paint to three parts water because I really want this to be a light whitewash over the putty that I did yesterday. We're gonna see how this goes, but this is a really tiny little jar and a really big can of paint. So it's probably gonna make a little bit of a mess. <laughs> Dang, I got it everywhere. This is so bad. Should I put this on the internet? That was really, really dumb. Okay, so I've got like, maybe like 12 ounces of paint and it goes up to like 48 ounces in here. So that's kind of perfect. Now I'm just putting water. Now I'm gonna stir it really, really well. Now I'm going to attempt to screw it onto the paint sprayer. Oh my gosh, this is scary. Also, I have my really bad clothes on because we're painting, so no big deal. Okay, it's on there. Now I'm gonna go test it on the plastic over there just to make sure that it is coming out okay. And then we're gonna start on the whole wall. Oh yeah, she working. All right, let's do this. And I will have these faux brick panels and this paint sprayer and all of the materials linked below if you do want to recreate this. I'll have the paint that I used and the putty if I can find it. I'll have absolutely everything linked below for you. Dang, it looks pretty freaking good with one coat. I think I'm gonna leave it. I'm really glad I watered it down as much as I did. Okay, you're literally watching me trial and error right now, but it's dripping a little bit. So I'm just gonna ball up some paper towels and dab it and we'll see if that works. Can I 
just say that I'm freaking proud of myself? Like, I know I'm not done with the wall, but I've done this on my own. I figured out what I wanted it to look like and I'm making it happen. And that's pretty freaking cool. Okay, so a little tip as I'm going, I had to take paper towels and dab off where it was dripping and it would be easy to just take a dry paper towel and start dabbing it. But I just used the same paper towel for literally like the whole wall and then it collects a bunch of the paint and it's like I'm sponging paint on there. So it's not taking a ton of the paint off the wall. It's putting the paint back on in a thin layer because it's like soaked into this paper towel. So that's nice because I didn't want to take a lot of the paint off of the wall and have a lot of the red brick showing through. I still wanted to have a lot of the paint on there. So as this gets more wet, it just reapplies more paint back onto the wall. So after dabbing some of the paint off with a paper towel, I realized I was definitely going to need a second coat on this. And so as you can see, when I'm putting the top coat on the very top of the wall, I just went really light handed with it because I did know that there was going to be a second coat coming that was going to cover up all of that stuff. hot right now it's like a hundred degrees out here so I have one and a half coats done pretty much I think it looks really cool but for the next coat I think I'm gonna do a little bit thicker paint versus like water um, so I might do one part paint to one part water or one part paint to two parts water not sure but I want to get a little bit of a thicker coat for the last coat because as I'm looking at it, I think I just want more white um, and less of the red color. I really don't want to be able to see any of the red color, but I do want you to be able to tell that it's brick. So I'm trying to find the balance between the two, but we're off to a really great start. So here's how it's looking after about one and a half coats. I think it looks really awesome and you could definitely leave it like this and it would look natural, but I did just want to get a little bit more of that white color um, so that you saw less of the red brick color. So coat number two started coming out a little bit slowly and then all of a sudden you can see it get really thick and it really, really covers everything. So I was happy about that, but also I wanted to dab some of that off and just see what it looked like if I tried to distress it a little more. ended up giving it a really good covering and just making sure that there was a ton of white paint up there and then going back and dabbing some spots and taking a little bit of that paint off. I am going to add a little bit more putty like I said at the beginning. I wouldn't be afraid to add a lot so I'm going to go ahead and add another 
layer of putty probably in the next week or so and just get some more thick texture on here. So I will include another video of putting more putty on this and touching it up just a little bit before the home gym is completely done. But this is what the wall looks like right now and you could totally leave it like this. It looks distressed, it looks awesome, and it looks like a New York loft apartment, which is exactly what I was going for. Well guys, I have literally no idea what my face looks like right now, but look at my hands. <laughs> so of course I made a mess. It's like impossible for me to do anything without making a mess. But the wall is painted. There are two coats on it and I think it looks really, really good. The only thing that I'm thinking about doing a little later on maybe is adding a little more putty, like the plaster type stuff to the brick now that it's painted. So I think you can definitely see some of it peeking through, but I might just wanna add some more texture, like some really thick spots of putty on there, but the wall is done for right now. I think this was a pretty awesome two day transformation just for buying a bucket of paint. And I only used about this much of it and we already had the wall putty. So you can do this if you have those things. That's really all it took. You don't even need a paint sprayer. Um, you could definitely just wipe it with a rag or use a brush and then it would look even more like hand done. Um, but I had a paint sprayer and so I was like, let's just do this really quickly, get it out of the way. So I hope you enjoyed this transformation. Don't forget to stick around to see how the rest of my home gym turns out. So I'm hopefully gonna be putting a pegboard on this wall and doing a mural on this wall. I will be making videos about all of it and then I will hopefully have a final reveal for you guys. I also still have to paint the bottom of the wall where the cinder blocks are. So I think I'm gonna do them probably like a grayish color. My hands look so ridiculous. But if you wouldn't mind, give this video a like, hit the thumbs up button, that helps me out so much. That helps other people see my videos, my DIYs, and the home decor journey that I'm on right now. Comment, let me know what you think of the wall. Do you think I should add more putty to it? Do you think I should distress it a little bit more? Let me know what you think of it. Also, if you have any home gym decor ideas, leave them below. I feel like gym decor is something that we don't really talk about a lot, but I want this space to be really beautiful and really bright and just motivate me to work out. So if you have any ideas, leave them below. Do not forget to subscribe. That would mean the world to me. I promise to bring you lots more home decor and DIY tips as I figure things out on my own. And my goal is always, always to bring you guys affordable home decor that makes you happy to be at home. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Marissa Designs. If you haven't already, I've been putting little stories up of the process of doing this wall. And I try to document a little bit of every project that I do, but you guys are the main priority. This is where I put all of the details and the final reveals and everything is on this channel. So don't forget to subscribe. You can also follow my personal account at Marissa Counts. I have another YouTube channel where I talk about lifestyle, travel, content creating. I just started it up. So I'm gonna be putting lots more videos on that channel and you can go subscribe to that. I'll have it in the description box below, but thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you next Monday for another home decor video. Bye guys. Thank you.